Head J, Ministry of Defence, Mr Vikram Nair. Chairman, I beg to move that the total sum to be allocated for Head J of the estimates to be reduced by $100. Singapore's need to develop its own defence capabilities came almost as suddenly as our independence. Shortly after our independence, the British forces who had been stationed here announced they would be pulling out ahead of schedule and Singapore would be responsible for its own defence thereafter. This precipitated the start of national service in 1967 and the focused development of Singapore's armed forces. As a small country, security is always a challenge. If it comes to a war, it is generally assumed that a big, well-resourced country will prevail over a small one. Unlike our neighbours, who have larger populations, larger land mass and natural resources, when Singapore gained independence, we were poor, had many pressing needs and competing challenges. But the government of the day knew from the day we started we needed a strong defence force and there would be no economic future, no security without one. Thus, they invested in defence even though it was difficult. The building of a strong defence force was also coupled with the building of strong defence ties and the Five Powers Defence Arrangements, or FPDA, with Malaysia, Australia, New Zealand and the UK in 1971 was one of the earliest defence arrangements we, went, we entered into. This has been built on later with further defence and training arrangements, including with other regional countries and big powers. These alliances have been built in the mutual best interest of all involved, and Singapore needs to be a strong and valued partner in order for other countries to want to form such alliances or agreements with us. Although our defence force remains strong and credible and our defence alliance is strong, the security environment remains fraught with risks and uncertainties. As we had discussed in the earlier debate on foreign affairs, these threats are wide-ranging and serious. The threat of terrorism continues to spread with growing incidents of radicalized individuals and fighters returning from the Middle East to the region. Attacks have taken place in major European cities and closer to home in Indonesia as well. The Korean Peninsula saw aggressive nuclear testing by North Korea barely a few months ago. And while ties appear to be warming now, the nuclear risk remains. Matters in the South China Sea have also calmed down a little. And but there is no clear resolution for the underlying differences, although hopefully parties can agree upon a code of conduct. Today, security threats are increasingly taking on new forms, including cyber threats. These are complex and unpredictable and take place below the threshold of war, and we may have to invest adequately to deal with such emergent threats. While these threats linger, they take place against a backdrop of a risk that the US may reduce its role in the region. So it is clear that we must continue to invest in defense. Our pioneer generation had the foresight to invest in defense, and the peace dividend we have enjoyed over the last 50 years is the backdrop which has allowed Singapore to grow and thrive. Today, on the basis of GDP per capita, we're one of the wealthiest countries in the world. Given our small size, and the existential need for defence, defence spending has been a significant part of our budget. Defence expenditure has also been rising in the region in the face of growing security concerns, meaning that all our regional neighbours are also building up their armed forces. As forecasted in the budget debate earlier, we will be moving into a period when our population will be ageing and our needs for social spending will be rising at the same time. Some have suggested, happily not inside this house, um, cutting the defence budget, a move that I would find worrying given that the security and defence are existential for us. What are Singapore's security plans in the face of the threats we face? And is our, uh, is our defence spending going to be adequate and sustainable in the face of these threats? Thank you. 